Hey guys, welcome to another live stream on Saturday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Uh, yeah, so welcome aboard. So anyways, I am totally unprepared, uh, like always. Just live streaming and hopefully answer some of your questions and what have you. Uh, but while everyone's coming in and settling in, um, just making sure everything's okay and make sure my microphone's on this time. Apologies for the noise, I have the AC going on because... Hot as heck in LA. So, anyways, we had some people waiting here, and I just want to give them a shout out because they came and go, they dropped by and uh, dropped out. Um, so, just a shout out to NY Gold, Prolific Breeder, Tampa Tom, Jad Horsey, uh, Madfish Diva, Angelo Fish Tanks, Damian Bloodstone. Hopefully, you guys are still here. I know you guys were going on in and out and stuff like that. Um, and of course, welcome to everyone that's just joining in now Julia and Martin K and Jason Holmes, Damian. Markham, good morning, guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, waiting for more people to come in uh, before we start talking about noise, the noise, um, and why I've been out of it, uh, not making videos for about six weeks, and it's kind of on purpose and not on purpose and and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll go through it in a bit because it's all about the noise. Now, before we do go on, if you guys are watching this, and or you guys are just watching the replays. Uh, this coming Sunday, not this, not tomorrow, but the next week over, if you're in SoCal, Scape is doing their, I believe their yearly, you know, meet, get together over at CK Fish World, which I am definitely going. Uh, luckily, someone in the Facebook um, uh, group chat mentioned that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that it was going on because uh, I just, it's hard to keep up with all the Scape stuff because... Uh, they their notifications don't go out very well unless you're on their website. We're looking at the website all the time, and I don't visit their website all the time. Just you know, just checking in once in a while. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great thing if you guys haven't seen it yet. I have a video on it um, a while back, and uh, it showed about one of the meets and how awesome it is and how fun it is. So a couple people from the Facebook group is talking about going. I'm not sure if they are going or not. Uh, but if you are, let me know. Let's meet up. Let's hang out so that uh, you don't feel alone there. Because I don't really know a lot of people from Scape itself. I think some of them know me from watching the channel. But I don't know them personally. I know one guy that I met two years ago when I was at that meet. His name is Brian. He's been you know, steadily following my videos. Um, so hopefully I'll get to see him again. Um, but he's a really cool dude. Uh, Wanted to get together with him afterwards, but then I kind of got out of it afterwards for a little bit. And, you know, just coming back in, I just started doing all the videos again. And just a lot of time. CK Fish World is like maybe a 40-minute drive from me. It's kind of far away, and I don't always go there or rarely go there. I think I've been there once since, what, two years ago, since that last meet. Um, so it's a drive out for me, and I have other fish stores that are closer that I get my stuff from. But CK Fish World is one of those really awesome fish stores, which I just would love to go just to you know, walk around and check things out. Problem is, it's so far away that I don't usually get out that way that much. But anyways, hopefully you guys are doing great. Hopefully all your tanks are doing good. Uh, just looking to chat again, see who came in. Past the Dirt Road, how you doing, brother? Fish man. By the way, where's Past the Dirt Road? Hold on a second here. The problem with uh, doing live chat is I need mods, and sometimes not all my mods can make it at the same time, so I have to, uh, you know, mod a lot more people, at least people that show up commonly that I see a lot. So I will give some people mods that, that I see that joins my live chat. Um, yeah, probably CK Fish, where it's on in Monrovia. So I modded some of you guys to just help me out because I, some weird reason I'm getting like trolls once in a while. So uh, if you see them, just knock them out. Sean, buddy, how you doing? Sean, hey, CK Fish World next week. I don't know if you're still in SoCal, but uh, that's where a lot of people are going to hang out, I think, it sounds like. So you should go check it out, dude. I would love to meet you finally face to face. American Reefing, welcome aboard, buddy. Good to see you here. Yeah, I just modded you, Sean. Nick, how's it going? 
Good to see you. Good to see you guys. And white gold. I know you're here a lot. Help me out there. But yeah. All right. Great. So uh, let's talk about noise. Um, well, let's talk about why I stopped making videos for six weeks. One, I needed a break. So I had to take a break because, you know, I work 40-hour week at a IT job, which I don't particularly like, which hopefully might be changing. Hopefully, no one from work sees this. Um, I don't know yet, really, because, you know, my main love right now is producing and stuff like that, doing videos and stuff. And one of my friends who work at College Humor is like, hey, you got to put in your resume. I talked to you about him. Um, and they need producers, so you should really put in a resume, and I'll probably get you in, in into my team. So he's been really uh, pushing me to do that, and I've been kind of like, yeah, you know, when you're sitting there and you're comfortable in a place, even though you don't like it, but you don't particularly all like it. I like it, but it's, I like the people there. It's just the job could be a pain in the butt. Uh, it's not particularly what I want to do every day at that job. It's supposed to be IT, but I'm not always doing IT, that kind of thing. Um, so, But when you get comfortable and you're there, eh. but, you know, if do the college human stuff, pays a lot more. Um, there's a lot more work, but then a lot more time off. And the way they do it is kind of weird, the way he was explaining to me. It's like, it's like 16-hour day for six months, and then the rest of the year you get off. I'm like, oh, well, that actually, that's not really bad. Because the rest of the year, the six months, I could totally concentrate on doing the water box or doing the gaming channel if, if I ever get back to it or whatever. And then go back to work for another I mean, That's actually a really cool way of doing things. I don't mind 16 hours a week or a day, I mean, um, of work just to get another six months off. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, and, you know, six months, 16 hours of stuff that you really, really love to do every day, then it's one of those things. So. Anyways, that's besides the point. One, uh, okay, on purpose, is that I wanted to see what happens because I'm trying to figure out the algorithm of YouTube uh, is, well, let's take a break off and see what happens. Or, yeah, take about six weeks off. I, I was thinking about a month, but I wanted to extend it two more weeks um, just to see what happens. So what happened was that all my views cut in half, which was what I'm expected that would happen. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is, well, how can my channel sustain itself if I did not do any videos other than the live stream that you guys see me do and that you guys join me here with um, every week uh, is, is what will happen to my channel. Well, my evergreen videos, the ones that everyone always look for or go back to watch, are still sustaining the channel, about maybe 2,000 something views, so getting about 15 to 20 subscribers a day, so it's not bad. But when I'm pushing three week videos a week, it doubles the, the views, right? Because each new video carries out to the older videos. That's how it works now. That's how the channel is all set up to work. Uh, so it, it works. So it, it's not going to be hard for me to just up all that again. Um, and then uh, my subscribers go up to about 30 to 40, sometimes 50, depending on the day. So it's kind of cool. It's really interesting. The other thing is... The reason, the other thing is burnout, trying to prevent burnout, because since I've done YouTube before, uh, you know, on the other channel, I, I get, I know when I'm going to start getting burnout, and burnout is the worst, because instead of taking a break off of a month or whatever, you take a whole year off, because the burnout kills you, and I felt the burnout coming, and I had to, you know, identify what the burnout is, and a lot of it has to do with noise, okay, now when I say noise, especially in this hobby, I'm talking about fighting the noise. And when I'm talking about fighting noise is when people come to me and ask me for, you know, advice and stuff, I have to fight the noise that they've been listening to. Okay? And and it's not that I'm saying I'm right, but the noise they're hearing is incomplete advice. It's uh the one liner advice that you get. Oh, just get more lighting. All right? That is never it's never the simple okay, for in this hobby it's never that simple. You can't just fix things with this one line solutions. All right. People are like, oh, my plants are going well, get more light. That's the worst advice you can get. OK, and I've seen it here in live chat. I've seen it all in my comments. I see it in Facebook groups and stuff. And a lot of us are the more veteran people that do this hobby have to fight that noise because we are in a society now. It's so unlikely 10 years ago where 
everything is meme, right? Everything's a damn meme, and everyone's like taking memes as fact half the time. Um, and a lot of people are just getting lazy and trying to explain people and just try to give them the one word answer because, well, it's, it's easier just to do that than to explain things. And I don't blame them for that either because, it, you know, I'm starting to get to that point where, you know, maybe you just do what you heard, okay? And then when you fail, you can come back and really, when you're ready to really talk about it. Because a lot of people just want that one one line answer. They just want the easy way out without understanding exactly why it's happening. Okay. Um, why are you getting brown algae? Well, why are you getting brown algae? Why are you getting diatoms? Well, you know, here, this is a good example. And I'm not blaming the person that asked this question in the Facebook group. Uh, was that, you know, his a local official said it, it's because you're using soil because it does, you know, it leaches a lot of phosphates in the water. That's just part of the problem. Just because you, you're going to switch everything out and put echo complete or whatever you want in there doesn't mean that you fix the problem. You might still get brown algae. So until you identify the exact source of your problem, which kind of having a, a very good suspicion that it's your water that you're using, if you're using tap water, because tap water can have a lot of phosphates in it. I know the, the water source tap water in my office has phosphates in it because I am running into the brown algae problem which is easily fixable, which is just compensating for the phosphates in the tap water with by not dosing that part of it or providing uh, the balance of the right light. Not too high, not too low. The brown algae will definitely produce if there's not enough lighting. And it's definitely produce if there's a lot of light. So you just got to find that right balance. But that's from my experience. But I try to explain it. It, it just sounded like he just wanted to try to fix it because he's been dealing with it for a long time. And you know what? All I did was give him advice on how to switch out his substrate and let him figure it out. Hopefully it fixes it. Hopefully not. But the thing is, is going back to the same thing, is finding the source of that problem. We have to fight this noise that everyone out there is hearing about or the advice that they're giving. It's so easy just to say, you need more lighting. Uh, do more water changes. It, it, there's not always the simplest solution. You got to find out actually why it's happening in the first place to fix it. All, otherwise, all you're doing is just prolonging it. You know, prolonging the problem. It's just going to keep coming back. And you're still going to get that problem. So I find that really frustrating a lot. And it's just not in this hobby, even in the working hobby, which is one of the pretty much determining factor why I stopped doing videos there. And I stopped. Get, I, I got out of the community because there was just so much bullshit that you had to had to try to teach people against. You know, uh, when I'm teaching airbrushing, it, it was it's really hard because you get a lot of different conflicting conf uh, information out there that they're not sure what to follow. Okay, so that is one of the part of the noise that I'm talking about. How to fix it? Well, if you're new to this hobby and stuff like that. Try to find the people that are going to tell you why it's happening, not just how to fix it. Uh, the people that will be patient enough to tell you why it's happening or help you figure out why it's happening. So if you can find that type of patient, uh, patient person that will tell you more than just the one-line answer, stick with them, talk to them a lot more, find a, a couple more people like them, and try to just stick with them for a while until you you know slowly gain that you know your contact book of people that that will be patient enough to explain stuff to you instead of people just shouting bullshit at you in, in a Facebook group or, or on the forum. Okay, so once you settle with that, with those people, then you're going to just start learning outside of your group slowly. And it makes things so much easier. It'll make less frustration for you if you can just find those people. Now, these people could be in a group, group, Facebook group, could be on YouTube, could be on forum, whatever. Just make sure you follow those people and stick with them for a while. Okay, and, and then just go from there. But try to like, you know, filter out the noise is, is what you have to do. The other noise I'm talking about is really community based. Right? And normally I don't talk about stuff like this. Maybe because I think it's just petty. All right. Um, which is uh, people just talking shit. All right. About other YouTubers or whatever. You see this a lot. I see this way, way lot in the gaming hobby. Because gaming people just love to do that. Us humans love drama. All right, and I hate it. All right, I hate that stuff where you just need to rag on someone just because either they're big, too small, 
whatever. We're all doing the same thing, so who gives a freak about how big they are, how small they are, right? Um, and I don't know. It just it kind of just triggered me. It's just one of those things that I just don't want to do it. This is the same reason why I stopped doing video games uh, and stopped doing video game channels, like why I, did, I stopped doing my World of Warcraft channel. Well, it's because it's just full of bullshit. It's like, why do you have to worry about this stuff? We got enough to worry about than just talking shit about each other. Uh, and that happens a lot. It happens a lot of on the smaller channels, talking about the bigger channels, how they just love to watch small things. It's great. If that's your thing, go for it. But why do you have to just dig in on, on the uh, bigger channels? If they're bigger, and here, here's the thing, and that's why originally the topic was about change, because I was going to talk about the change uh, from a smaller channel when we get bigger and we get bigger. I've been through all that uh, in, in other other hobbies uh, where it's a small channel. It's fine. And it's more intimate. Right? But when you get bigger, things change. Things will always change. Your dynamics will change. And whether you'll stick with them or not, it's up to you as a viewer, as a follower. Right? And uh, they're going to probably do stuff that you won't like. They're most definitely going to do stuff that you won't like. But that's... It uh, that's that's the thing. Sometimes a lot of that stuff is perception, and you know I I hear people just uh, digging in mainly a lot like you know on Joey because she's he's a huge target, right? He's the, one of the biggest channels for aquariums, and uh, he's an easy target. All right, he's been in this for way way long time. I went back and looked at his first video it was like what seven seven eight years ago, probably around the time when I started doing my wargaming channels. Uh, was when he got he started his channel so he grew from so I started watching from the beginning and that's kind of how I got into doing uh, videos for you guys uh, I watched him grow and I understand a lot of it because I've been through the same thing in the hobby so the thing is is yeah you know, it it, it kind of dissuades me from wanting to be part of this community when you have so much people just talking about shit you know about other people you don't have to talk shit about people just just do it your way. Teach it your way. But why do you need to rag on some other people? Now, half the times I just think they do it <laughs> just to get views. Because that's that's a good way to get views. Is just stir up the drama. Uh, drama boat. And, and rock it a little. <clears throat> I just hate that shit. <clears throat> I think there's just better ways to get views and more uh, <clears throat> easier ways to get views. Than just doing that. But, you know, that's the world we live in. Uh... You know, a lot of things people talk about doing how you know they hate any uh, hate how he, you know where he's going and stuff like that. But yet he's growing in leaps and bounds. He has tons of followers. He's got tons of fans. So he's doing something right. Maybe it's not your cup of tea anymore. It happens. Doesn't mean that you have to keep watching him. Just go to other things. There's a lot of other channels out there. Uh, this is the same thing. I mean, I can't understand because I still follow Joey and I love watching Joey. But what happens to me on the other side is actually Corey from Korean Co-op. I used to love. Going to his live chats. Because it wasn't just talking to him and listening to him. I was always so talking to the community of people that he built. In the live chat. And that's what I loved about it. I stopped going. Because he got really, really big. He put a... Uh, uh, he, he slowed down the chat. Which he has to. Because that's that's the only thing you can do when you, you get that big. And you have so many people in a live chat. Uh, so I just stopped going. Because it stopped becoming something that I really loved go, uh, going to do. So I just moved on to something else. But I still love Corey. I still watch his videos once in a while. And I still would love to sit down with him and uh, and just talk shop. Uh, talk, you know, aquariums and talk YouTube. Because he's, he's a fellow YouTuber. And that's the way I see it. Uh, fellow YouTubers, our fellow YouTubers. And we got to kind of stick together whether you're big or small. And, and I always, you know, try to back people up. But I just stop backing up when they just want to start, t start talking shit about other people. When all you really need to do is just worry about yourself. But anyways, that's what I'm talking about, noise. And that's what I'm talking about, why I need to take a break. Because I know that kind of burnout will kill the channel. I will, I will stop doing videos because I can find other things to do. It's really that simple. I can find other things to do. Another channel I can start about a different hobby. And, and, I, and I've done that plenty of times. And I just didn't want that to happen again because I actually love this community. You know, and, and it's just trying to ignore the nitty gritty, ignore the noise. But anyways, there you guys have it. Uh, that's just a quick little topic there. I just want to talk about, get out to you guys. Um, also, again, want to talk more about aquariums and stuff. 
check out our Facebook group. It's a little self plug here. And then uh, next week, check out uh, the Scape Meet. Go to the Scape website. It's s c a p e dot org. I think it's it's Southern California's um, aquarium plant enthusiast group. All right, so you could always search that up on uh, Google. Actually, in fact, let me just post it here so people could see it. Now, I'll try to post it in the description below. Uh, but yeah, it's scapeclub.org. And I'll go ahead and pop that. But uh, I would like to hear your opinion about bigger channels, uh, what you think about them. Joey's channel, Aquarium Co-op, doesn't fish tank, the bigger guys, and the little guys too, the, you know, your favorites and stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let's go in the chat, take a look. I would love to hear from you guys and, and stuff like that. Uh, so let's see here. Pastor Dirt Road, thank, big thanks on the Fish World recommendation when I was visiting by my favorite shop ever. I know, right? That was awesome. It's a really cool fish store. Now, I believe... I. I you you you're uh you just came down right because you were you messaged me on Facebook because I see I did I did, I didn't connect your uh, YouTube nickname with your Facebook real name so sorry about that I just knew that you have watched my channel and I couldn't really figure out which you know YouTube uh a user you were but yeah and that other place too that's that's really cool I gotta check that place out that you went down to but that's that's a little far from me. Sean, yeah, next weekend, uh, Sunday. You volunteer to troll. Troll me, baby. Oh yeah, NY Gold. You can troll me anytime. Uh, sometimes it's hard to make the movie. Yeah, it is. You go going to work a day by working my small, but yeah, especially if you love what you do. I mean, if I'm producing some kind of show or something like that. Oh, yeah. I would totally just live doing that. That would be so much fun. Now, like, I wish I could do with a water box like Joey 24 hours a day. I would love it. You know, it would be cool to go speak, meet you guys, make more v cool videos. And just every time you guys just have an answer, I'll just make a video about it. It's so easy to do. It's just that time-wise, when you're working 40 hours a day, a job, a 40 hours a week job, you come home, I'm freaking tired as heck. And it, that three videos a week almost wrecked me it, it was burning me a hardcore because of the work i had to do so because i don't just put on turn on the camera and talk right um the reason why i do what i do is because i need to actually make sense in order to make sense i have to research in order to research or oh, i have to write out uh, an outline in order to write an outline i have to actually research the subject i even though i know about it i had to still do research on it Right, because there's stuff I don't know completely, or I don't know at all. I also has to. I also want to touch base on the stuff that I don't think is right versus what I think is right. So all that goes into the outline, and that could take three to five hours. I wish I had a team of researchers to help me do that. Right, and I would write up an outline. It does take two, two to three, maybe five hours, depending on the subject. Uh, and I would just do the research, Google it. Uh, read the forums and stuff like that while I'm watching a show or whatever. And then once I've done that, then I gotta go film it. Once I film it, the filming part is really easy because most of the tutorial stuff I do be in front of that screen, that background. Okay, and it, and the reason why I use a background is, and I will explain this in one of the videos coming up, one of my vlogs, is that I just want to concentrate uh, you versus me against the subject and not, you know, with fishes swimming around and detracting from the attention of what we're talking about in the background right i'm already giving you the information as quick and fast as i can without babbling so uh you know that it's just that type of video i want to do it's just you and me on the subject learn it get the hell out and if you want to watch you know uh more you know fun fluffy stuff you can watch my vlogs and uh the other little little series that i do yeah, three videos a week is hard. It is tough. Try doing them one every day. Even one video could be tough if you're really busy with life itself. Yeah, it's drive-by advice. Good good way to, to explain it. I think I'm going to start using drive-by advice. But it, it is drive-by advice, and it, it's it's noise. It, it just sometimes it just doesn't work for everyone. I mean, it's just 
one-liners. You don't. You're not finding what the actual problem is, and it might help you fix it, but it's just gonna come back. Yeah, the internet creates a lot of experts. That's true. Makes everyone an expert. Sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. You know. My LFS has a solution of bad advice. They don't know anything, and don't make suggestions. Yeah, that's true. To find the problem, and then you can make suggestions. At least you can find the problem and say, well, this is how you fix your problem. Rather than just not, you know, ignoring the actual problem or what's causing the problem and just giving blank, you know, blank check advice. <laughs> yeah, please, guys, like and share. That would be awesome. A lot of mixed advice all over the internet. The best way to go and fix it yourself, I figure it out because every tank is different. That is very true, too, Martin. Uh, one of the things that I do say is that, hey, your tank is always different. Uh, I can give you the basic, you know, basic, like, canned advice. But since your tank is different, you're going to need different solutions, you know. What would you do if Donald Trump banned all fish keeping? The... Uh, Pissed and moan, I guess. I don't know, really. What what can you do if he did ban all fish keeping? I don't know why he would, but uh, it's Donald Trump. You would never know. Not a fan, but how how did you? Someone has collected a bunch of bad advice. How do you? You just gotta kind of work at it. You gotta just tell him to be patient and find the source of the problem before you try to fix it. That's always my go-to thing. Find the source of your problem first. Fix that. All right. Don't try to patch up and band-aid uh, something that's just going to come back and haunt you for the rest of your life. You know, things people like. I got a lot of things like uh, a lot of people telling me, "Well, I've been battling algae for months now." I go because you're not finding the source of your algae problem. You're just trying to just get rid of algae when you should easily. Do that one thing that will keep it from coming back. A lot of times, it's just about finding that source and, and fixing the balance of your tank. And I'm, you guys hear me say it all the damn time. And I want to you know, admit that is my favorite thing to say is balance your tank, right? Because that is the ultimate goal or the ultimate fix to anything about a tank. If Once you balance it and you understand how to balance your tank, dude, it's smooth sailing, right? Um... Ray from Ray's Aquaria, she nominated me for, a, you know, uh, doing a video on my worst, uh, what is it, worst day in fish keeping. And I think someone asked me this before, months ago. And I, I, I just don't know how to do a video on that because to me, I never had a bad worst day in fish keeping. Fish die, when fish die, fish die. And that's probably on me. All right. When people ask me about diseases, it's hard for me to answer because I have barely any ex experience with fish disease because my fish never get diseased, okay? Um, I am more understanding about problems with plants because I, I think because we, I'm more interested in that and I, I purposely do things to make things go wrong so I can understand it. Same exact reason why I stopped doing videos for six weeks because I want to see what happened to my stats on, on my YouTube channel. Um, that's one of the reasons why. I just want, just out of curiosity, what would happen and how can I just go back and fix it right away so that if anything happens in the future, I can easily do that. If I ever start a new YouTube channel, I know what to do. And that, that's how I learn. I know I purposely destroy things so I can build it back up. And that's how I've always been as a kid. I, I'm one of those kids that your parents dread, or at least my parents did. Because everything, they, every time they bought me a toy, I play with it and then I break it. And the reason why I break it because I wanted to see how it worked, and that's the reason why it breaks because I tear it apart. And most of the times I fix it, and that's just kind of like how I grew up. And that I, I guess that's how I don't know. That's how I figure things out. That's how I get my experience. This is how I get gain my knowledge. Uh, Pastor Dirt Row, that's why I'm with you, man. You explain better than anyone. Well, thank you, man. That's one thing that I like priding myself in is that I think I do explain things better, well, mainly because I 
again, like I said, I break the toy, figure out how to work so I can understand how to explain to someone how to fix that problem. You know, and I think that's one of the big things. I think a lot of people don't have enough patience to do that nowadays. And it's totally understandable. I'm not blaming you. I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything. But maybe take some time to learn it. And then you'll understand it better. It'll make your fish keeping uh, adventures much, much more easier in the long run. Right? Because if you want to stick with this long term because you love what you're doing with your tanks, learn it. Understand why the problem is happening in the first place so you know how to fix it from here on out, you know. Uh, what's that saying? Um, give a man a fish and he'll be full for a day, but teach him how to fish and he'll be uh, full for the rest of the life. I forgot how that saying works, but that's very true. The biggest problem I see in the hobby is a complete lack of patience. Todd, I agree with you there, and honestly, that's just everywhere nowadays because with all the advent of technology and stuff, you know, I'm trying not to show my age here, but 20 years ago, you needed patience. Nowadays, a lot of things are done for you because we have that technology to do it. Information just comes readily anywhere. False or true, it's just going to come at you, right? And then it's just easier to just take what you see at hand and take it for work. So it's just the way society works nowadays. But you're right. It is the complete lack of patience, and a lot of people need patience. And the thing is, and I, I've explained this in a last uh, live chat, is that a lot of people also don't have the patience because they watch my videos and they see a tank from start to finish in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, versus not understanding that it took months to actually do all that, right? I filmed it, you know, every time I, 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 I made, did or did something to that tank. And it was all in the span of six months or whatever months it was. And it wasn't in 10 minutes. So when they see that, that done in 10 minutes, they say, oh, well, this looks easy. Of course, it looks easy. You watch a video of something done in six months in 10 minutes. It's not that easy. It's a lot of work. They don't see the work behind it, right? I don't film all the work behind it. I don't film all the thought process behind it because then it would be a video six months long, right? So... You know, you just got to keep in mind that you got to have that patience. Uh, Martin K, especially people abusing others on YouTube because they've done something wrong differently to them. Yeah, that's the other thing. That's part of the noise, too. I think one of the things is um, someone, I'm not going to name his name, someone uh, made a YouTube uh, video about Joey, and he said, well, being as big as you are and proclaiming yourself as king of the year, why, why are you making such rookie mistakes? That is the reason why I still watch Joey. I st this is the reason why I would still watch anyone. I don't give a shit how big you are. You should still be making mistakes. I don't give a shit how, if you proclaim yourself to be what or what have you. That's just all marketing bullshit. This is marketing bullshit that you need to grow a channel. It happens. But, in the deeper sense of it is, if you're, if you're presenting yourself as being perfect, that you don't make rookie mistakes, then you've already lost my attention. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe you or listen to you or even give you any serious attention if you think you know it all already. All right? And that's probably one of the reasons why I still watch Dustin. We still watch Joey. I still watch Corey because they still talk about the problems that they have. The same mistakes that we as you know, fish keepers, whether new or old, or don't have a YouTube channel or don't have a big YouTube channel, still make if you're still making those mistakes at 700,000 I don't know where he's at right now uh, then it just shows me that you're human simple that you still struggle with the same mistakes now I don't know if he's gonna let me show you now as I said I didn't make any videos uh, in the last six months maybe because I told you I'm dealing with possible burnout which you know I felt coming on so I DM someone. My phone would stop misbehaving. You know, and I asked them, I go, hey, how you doing? How the heck do you keep from burning out on YouTube? Our situations are different, of course. I hold a 40 hour job and try to put out three videos a week, and a Saturday live stream is killing me. 
I'm not doing videos in the last three weeks, just live streams in my channel that I have no more views. I still run a bigger channel. It's a little bit bigger, about 28k subs, but I stopped because I got out of the hobby. It's a hell of a grind. I don't know. Just reaching out to say hi and maybe some insights on how you keep this stuff up. Stay awesome, brah. I say brah a lot. Uh, that's my thing, brah. And he says it's tough. That's for sure. I'm always burning out. I get a second win, though, and I keep going. Must be on my 37th win by now. It's really cool to hear that someone that big still has the same problems I have. Even at my size of a, of a channel. And that's what makes them real to me at least. And that was Joey. That was TM on, on uh, Instagram. So these guys, no matter how big they are, still have problems. And when they talk about it, it just shows me that they're human. And we're just watching another... Aquarius doing YouTube channels to help share, teach, whatever they do, right? So you could rag on them all you want. Oh, he's so big now. And he doesn't do it the way I, I liked it. Well, sorry to tell you, you're not his only viewer watching his channel, you know? And maybe you should start giving them a break. When you think that just because they proclaim themselves something, that they must always be perfect in their videos. They're not. They're human. And that's what you got to remember. So anyways, where else are we going here? Moving on. I am like, oh, when you confront people giving bad advice, they really go nuts. It's very close to nuts. Yeah, just don't. I just ignore that. I don't, I don't, that's one of the things I don't say, I hate saying that you're wrong because sometimes they might be right. They're just not completely right because they're not looking into the problem that the other person he's giving advice to is having. Or maybe they think they are actually right because they, that's how, what they did to fix their problem too. So in a sense, they could be right. So I usually don't get into that conversation. I don't get into that argument with them. I, I don't want to. Uh, again, we're all fish keepers. We're doing our best as we can. So you can tell one person this. I'll tell the other person that. It's up to that person to figure out what is right, what is wrong. I'd rather give a lot more attention to that person if he really is having a problem. He's getting frustrated. If I see that, it's really easy to see because we all been through it. You can identify when someone's being really frustrated with the tank because something's going wrong. Help them out. Sit down and say, hey, breathe. Calm down. Let me know what the problem is. Let's see if we can figure it out. I'm going to ask you a lot of freaking questions first. Okay? Do that. Sit them aside. They're going to appreciate it. People will appreciate that kind of attention regardless if they're patient or not. Okay? Keep going. And if again, if they still want to just go with the easy way, then just tell them how to do it. Just say, okay, you know what? Do it the easy way. If you still have problems, you know, and it keeps coming back because not really, we're not really getting to the root of the problem, then just let me know. And that's really all you can do. At least they appreciate it. At least they know that they have someone to go to if it's not working. And that's that's the kind of person that you have to be to really help push something, push someone forward in this hobby. And the more people you push forward in this hobby, it pushes you forward in this hobby, right? Because you never know. Trust me, you never know in this this community of ours that the people you help, regardless, can sometimes come back and help you back not just in the aquarium hobby but just life in general you never know trust me been through it all right there you know sometimes doing all these videos and stuff can seem really lonely now when i was doing videos for the war game hobby uh i started early with the airbrushing stuff so i became one of the bigger channels in the hobby really quick really fast okay now it's different nowadays because you know things change but back then when i was big along with a couple of friends that i met through youtube it became, you know, one of my closest friends. He had a big, you know, channel that did painting tutorials, and he got really big. And I met him through YouTube because when I started my wargaming channel, I contacted him, say, "Love your channel. Uh, uh, it's really cool what you do and stuff like that." And we actually got on the phone because he lives in San Diego, I live in L.A., so we got on the phone and we found out that we were really, really cool. Uh, we have kind of, you know, fit. Like, you know, we're really, we could be really good friends. And that's what happened. We just turned out to be really great friends. Uh, he's one of my uh, best friends in the world. Even though I haven't talked to him in a while, he, he, I'm always there for him. He's always there for him. It's just stuff that comes out of these 
type of relationships and, and the hobby we share. So, you know, that the channel was really big back then. And, um, damn, I totally lost thought of where I was going with this. Uh, but anyways, it, it's all about... It's all about me forgetting my train of thought. I have no clue where I went with that. Sorry, guys. I, if I remember, I'll go back to it. I forgot why I was saying that when I was a bigger channel. There was something to that. Maybe you got to remind me down there. I don't know. Uh, down in the chat. But I'm trying to get through the chat one at a time. <laughs> Barn K is called jealousy. Ah, maybe. I think so. It could be. But the problem with jealousy in this is... I see this a lot, too, because I have to deal with it. Again, my Wargaming channel, I built a... Not just a community, but a group. We called ourselves the War, War Gamers Consortium. We called ourselves the Consortium. We got known as the Consortium. I took a bunch of people that were around my channel size and some more bigger than my channel size. Said, let's get together. Let's make a little group that we could rely on each other. It, it was a support program more than anything. We weren't there to say we're better than everyone else that's doing YouTube on War Gaming. It's not, it wasn't all about that. It was us getting together. And talking, and we all became really good friends. We all went uh, to something called Valhalla. It's where it's a gamers retreat, where we all went there and played tabletop gaming for a week, um, over over in the mountains in Utah. I think it's great. It was awesome. And uh, that little group, it's all about supporting each other and, and stuff like that. And in that, a lot of smaller channels would talk about us and say, "Well, you know, that's and that." I'm like, "Well, why would you say that?" In no way did we ever say we were better than you. No way. We were just a little group that we call ourselves the Consortium. And we try to produce content and bounce ideas off each other to give to our viewers. Right? That's what it's about. That's kind of what I want the Aquarius Coalition to be about too. Uh, but a little more open. But we were a little close. There was about maybe 15 of, of us doing the same thing. And it ranges from really small channels to really big channels. Right? Uh, I think the biggest channel was called Mini Wargaming. And um, he's my brother. That's that's how. See, like I said, we all became really good friends. Uh, and they're like what? I think four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand subscribers. I don't know. Um, but you know, smart channels. You know, said, "Well, this you guys do this, that." We're not. I go, of course, included. We're always there for you guys. Just ask the questions. I don't know why you have to be so hostile, right? And and a lot of people are saying he's just jealous, right? I go, well, how do you know he's jealous? Because well, he told us. He goes, why isn't he part of it? Why? I'm like, well, he doesn't really fit the group. And that's, the thing, that's important. When I made that group, it's like, I want everyone to understand and fit and, and, and think the same. Well, not think the same, but, but have a like-minded group to understand what we're doing is important. Like, you know, a lot of us is all about driving, you know, growing bigger, driving and becoming bigger. That was the main goal of the group and becoming bigger together. A lot of people, the smaller channels, didn't, didn't have that aspiration to grow bigger they just want to share their you know their hobby and i'm like well that's fine to share a hobby but we're all about pushing each other and being that support system to, to get up there to grow big you know and that and and as bad as that might sound to some people uh it's okay if you don't want to grow big you just want to share that's fine but for us we're about growing big and stuff like that so we didn't understand where the jealousy was coming from you know and i don't understand that fully either because, you know, when I was a small channel here, and I saw Big Channel, I didn't care. I aspired to be them. And that was about what it was about. I looked at what they're doing, how they're doing it. I asked them questions. I would ask Corey. I would ask Joey. I asked Dustin. Um, I asked Jacob. And they are more than happy and very pleasant telling me what they're doing. And they're like, well, I'd do this and that. I could ask them. If, I, they, if you just ask and not be an ass about it, they will talk to you. They will be there and talk to you about it and have fun with you. As long as you don't, just don't go off being a dick about it. You know, sorry for cussing, but, oh, well, I don't know. Is dick cussing? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'm babbling on and on. Of course you can keep a school Oscar. In, okay, that's a question for someone else. Yay, Turtle Girl. Yes, you did actually make a stream for once. You made a stream where I'm just babbling on and on and on. And I must be babbling a lot because I'm so far behind. Fish the Fisherman. Two, two water box. If you don't like someone, watch someone else. See, there's so many YouTube channels out there now. When I first started the water box, Corey was still small. Dustin was still about 7,000 subscribers, something like that. 
So it was still a small new thing. And then I took my break and came back. And I didn't know where all these channels suddenly came from. It was funny. And then I think um, Racing, uh, he, he's like, hey, good to see you back. Uh, welcome back to the Fish Fam. I'm like, what's a Fish Fam? That's a new thing. And then I had to ask him, well, what's this all about? He goes, oh, we all got together. We started hashtagging Fish Fam. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So things did grow. And then and, and Corey blew up a lot. I mean, he got bigger. Not blew up, but he got bigger. Todd, I don't often have time to watch your live streams, but I really like the information put out. Thanks. So you're welcome, Todd. I'm more than happy to put out that information when I have time. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting back to you, guys. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going back to, this, to writing the outlines and doing the, the videos and stuff like that. And I want to try some new things, too. Uh, the vlog, I'm trying to try to kind of change the co uh, format a little. Uh, make it more, a little more storytelling, but I don't know if I could do it right, but we'll see it's it's a little hard because of the way I, It's not an actual vlog that I'm running here. It's more of a, a how-to informational channel But I also want to give that in, entertainment too Martin K co-op was fun, but now serious and talk a lot about business. Yeah, he does I don't mind the business talk because I you know, I, 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 I like talking about business I'm one of those guys, but you're true though I don't really watch this channel really much about fish anymore. Uh, the really big channels I still watch like consistently, like I never want to miss, is Dustin. I love Dustin. He's really cool. Um, and Joey. Excuse me. Jenny. And um, uh, Acapros. Like I watch him religiously. I, I love Mike. He he's, he's really awesome. I wish I, I'm going to meet him one day. Someday. I would meet you, Mike. That's for sure. I would love to meet him. And uh, I had a new favorite. Uh, George Farmer I'll watch once in a while. But I do. Oh, okay. I have a favorite, but that's not an aquarium channel. It's actually a, a vlogging channel. Uh, let's see. Fishman, I don't watch big channels because they don't ever have time to answer my comments. It's hard. When you're that big, you're not going to be able to answer everyone. Right now, I can answer everyone's comments. But trust me, if I get bigger, bigger, and bigger, it's going to be hard to do it. And I'm not going to be able to answer everyone, everyone's comments. I will ask. I will answer them if it's like like a question or important question. But I won't reply to things like, hey, love your videos. This is great information. I, I would always say thank you right now. I would always say thank you even to those comments. But if I'm going to get that big... I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to answer those type of questions. But again, you could also ask me anything on the Facebook group, or you could friend me on Facebook. You always ask me there. There's people ask me questions on Instagram. When you have a legit question, or you just want to chat once in a while, and I have time to chat, I will chat with you. It's it's not a problem, and I don't mind it either. Um, but you got to understand that someday. Or even now, it's really busy for me. But I shall still try to do my best to, you know, talk to you guys. I met Joey in person in Brooklyn. Couldn't meet a nicer guy. He spoke for an hour and stayed three more taking pics with everyone. Yeah. Uh, I went to his meet over here. You guys saw the video. Uh, over at uh, Uncle Sam's Discus. And he did that. He did a... Uh, Aquascape demonstration and he just stuck around for a long time talking to people and taking pics and answering the questions and there was a long line and he just went through everyone. He just he was so patient about it. And he's a very nice guy. And I think I think a lot of people think he's arrogant or whatever and he comes across that way. See, I see I can't see that in his videos. I can see why people would say that, but I can't see his video because I met him in person, talked to him in person. And once in a while, I do, like, DM him if I had a question. He had no problem with asking him. He was always very nice to me. Uh, he was very nice to me in person. So I saw him as the person he really was versus just what he says on his channel. And a lot of things, I'm going to tell you right now, on my channel, on his channel, on any videos he puts out, Dustin's channel, a lot of that is not actually reflected in the actual person he really is. Or the actual person that I really am. It, me, I'm really, really quiet in real life. You'll notice that. Because I will sit, I will stand in the back and watch. I'm a watcher. I'm a guy that listens. Right? I don't normally... Uh, I'm not really a party. I'm, I'm very introvert. Okay? I become an introvert when I flip that switch when I have to. 
uh, mainly because like on my wargaming channel when I go to do a speaking meet when I'm teaching a class or when I'm working at the Badger airbrushing booth and, and doing demos and stuff I have to flip that switch but I'm naturally an introvert I love staying at home mostly I'm by myself or someone I'm close to or you know small group of friends that's what I like I like the quiet I like uh, that kind of stuff I'm not a huge party I mean when I was younger yeah but nowadays no total introvert but I will flip the extrovert um, switch get drunk and dance on a table I mean I will do that I mean it's just it's just one of those things it drives me nuts and it drains the hell out of me for going to conventions and stuff like that but uh, I mean I do it because I do like meeting people I do like helping them with their problems if they have one or just talking shop. Like um, a quite experience right now, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to go and figure all that stuff out. But I really do want to go and meet a lot of people there. And I'll meet a lot of other YouTubers uh, that that are going there too. Besides this channel, Mass Aquariums is good too. Yeah, I watch some of Mass Aquariums stuff. He's like a really cool guy. I don't watch all his stuff. Um, but I mean, but like ADU Aquascape, I don't watch him that much, but I do watch him and I really like his videos, uh, but I don't watch him religiously. Um, and I think maybe it's just because the way they, they release the videos, the way they do videos, you know, we all have our different tastes of, of what we like, how our videos are presented to us. And then it's true. YouTube is like watching TV. You like a show for where, you know, where a lot of people would like this show, you might not like it because it's just not your taste. It happens. No, it's good. We got a lot of varieties out there. You know? Um, I like the king because he's entertaining and honest. And I'm planning a tank guy, though. And he doesn't do much with plants. Yeah, totally. He doesn't do much with plants either. But I still watch him because he's still Aquarius. And I like the stuff he does. I like all the things he toes to. And I like the changes. That a lot of people complain that, oh, he's always changing stuff up. And I'm like, I think about it, I'm like, that's not completely true because you're just watching videos versus where he's doing it in real life. His real life, like I explained before, is a span of three or four months, whereas you're watching his videos all fit into 10 minutes. So what looks like might be he's always changing stuff up might not always be the case, you know. Um, and just because he does change stuff up, who cares? He, he's always fiddling with his fish room, and that's the kind of thing I like. You know, you're always trying different stuff. You're always starting some stuff and seeing how it goes. That's what I do. Hey, Liberty Bell Cichlids. Welcome to the chat. Good to see you on board. Hey, D. Good to see you. Glad to see you here. Where are we at? Turtle Girl, why are you not a mod on my chat? Okay, modded turtle girl. Oh, I'm not a fisherman, but that's cool too. Let's see here enough. All right. Um, Corn Avenger, I guess I need to catch a replay. Yeah, you should, because I talked about you, bro. <laughs> uh, great, I have to do that. Well, I did talk about you. I just didn't name you. But I think people figured it out if they watch you too, so. And by the way, all that stuff I talk, and if you don't know from what I just said, it was a video that Aquarium Adventures did release. Uh, he's talking about Joey, and it's nothing on him because when I watch his video, I saw, I was watching as a commentary, but I was just combining all everything I saw in his comments and in other people's comments about Joey and about the bigger channel. It's not just Joey because Dustin and Corey gets the same rap. Any big channel out there gets the same rap. You know, the, a lot of it has to do with, um, I love watching him in the beginning, but now he's all changed up. And so, things change, damn it. All right? Things change, especially in this hobby, things change. Even with your tank, things change. Um, so you just got to deal with it. If you don't, move on. Watch someone else. Find a new uh, channel to watch. Okay? But uh, what I'm saying here is not a dig on Aquarium Adventures because he, he released that video. I watch his video mainly as a commentary. I mean, he does go through some stuff where I just said, well, why is he saying this if it's not actually a dig on Joey? But again, you got to watch the whole video to understand. Okay, again, it's that noise thing. Listen to the whole thing first before you make a decision, especially in this day and nature where everything's an outraged society. You know what I'm saying? 
first thing you hear that that you don't like is suddenly they're a racist or something. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. But listen to the whole thing before you make your decision. Uh, Cichlid, Guru, NYC, good to see you here, buddy. I've been talking to you in a while. <coughs> Uh, what was, what would you say is the worst advice you ever received? The worst advice you ever received? Um, I don't know if there's the worst advice. Um, it, it, the worst advice is always those one-liners without finding the problem. I mean, I did have a problem once in a while that I go to the forum and I was like, hey, I have this problem with it. And then I ask it, and I realize I shouldn't have asked it, and I'll just go to someone else or someone I know. Okay, uh, and all the worst advice are just those one-liners that I would say, oh, it's this. And I'm like, wait, how do you even come to that conclusion it's this? And I don't get a reply. And that's when I know this guy's uh, advice is just freaking completely worthless. Because all he did was just sh drive by advice. You know, he shot out his advice and left and didn't care about it. And it was completely useless advice. Because I'm sitting here like, why would that even matter? Explain to me why that wouldn't even matter. So the worst advice are always those drive-by advice. That's the only thing I think of. Because I don't always take advice as gold. I would take the advice, listen to it, and then go research it even more. And try to compare it with other opinions. Um, I don't always try to stick to that one you know, advice. If I, Especially if I know it's kind of not all there you know that that can't be correct kind of thing if i stop growing algae my snails are gonna die yeah, that's pretty bad advice. i don't know if that's bad advice but that's just weird advice it's not crazy one look dude i don't clean my, the back of my tank wall only for a simple reason i want the algae there uh, not only does it feed certain livestock in my tank, but it still helps with certain things. If you have a little algae, it's, it's, see, algae is not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing to us as Aquarius because we want to be able to see and look into our tank and look at a nice little aqua skin, right? That doesn't have green all over it. And in some cases, I think having a little algae on rocks and driftwood is actually very natural looking, right? So we're, it's just us humans just being arrogant as we are, thinking that we should control the way we want things to look. In retrospect, algae is just part of nature, and it actually helps with the whole the whole uh, ecosystem of, of, of what's going on in your tank. So I would always suggest leaving the algae in the back, back wall of your tank, especially if plants are just going to cover it up, because it helps. Algae does help, as long as it doesn't go out of control and mess up your pretty little aquascapes. But in uh, you know retrospect, uh, algae is just part of it. It doesn't, I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't really kill, destroy anything, you know, assuming that you get diatoms, which is bad. Uh, Blue-green algae does is bad because it covers up your plants, and your plants don't get, get uh, light and everything, but that's our problem as, of course, not nature itself. You know, it, it just happens. So are you crazy for wanting a little algae? No. I definitely suggest keeping the algae, especially if it looks good on your rocks and driftwood, leave it. It's not going to kill anything. And uh, leave some on your back glass or just for it to be part of the ecosystem that's in your tank and to feed some of your lights. What would it cause a rainbow fill on top of the water in the tank? Uh, it's like oils and, and residue and stuff. Um, and it happens to a lot of people. Uh, get a surface skimmer or something that will kind of skim your water that will get rid of it I don't know if your your filter intake has a surface skimmer but you can buy one of those uh, you can make your own surface skimmer I think uh, uh, one fish two fish ROC actually has a video on uh, making a do-it-yourself surface skimmer which looks very easy to do so if you need a surface skimmer just build one it's very fairly cheap and uh, just run it for you know a couple hours if, when you see the film in your tank my question, my 20 gallon high, having lots of algae on glass and I have 10k full spectrum light on it. That's fine. Um, balance? I don't know how strong your light is. 10k full spectrum only tells me that your light is uh, very blue. 
It has no bearing on how intense it is actually in your tank and on your tank. I don't know how much how many how much plants you have in that twenty gallon high. I haven't looked at your plant, uh, your tank in a while. Uh, but you you need to all know all that information before we can figure out why you're getting a lot of algae on your glass. And algae on glass will happen. Uh, you could coal it by not making a lot of algae on your glass by keeping the balance of your tank correct. So more plants, uh, more plants that are growing healthy, will keep that algae from just overtaking the glass you take. There will be there. I'll see you later. Thank you for joining us today. The problem with living in the information age is the information isn't always accurate. That is completely correct. Aquaballs, watch my LVS got a lot of fish in store now. Cool. Good to hear that. Sahi, so yeah, it's important to. Okay, Sahi so says it's important to do your own research and understand your tank. Very important. Uh, understanding your tank, understanding how to keep it balanced is. Going to save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Making uh, Martin cases and making mistakes and is part of the hobby. In my opinion, I made plenty, and that's how you learn. That's always something new to learn in the aquarium hobby. That's why I love it. It's exactly true. It's not just the aquarium hobby. Uh, it happens in real life too. I mean, even in uh, my job, sometimes I I want to see well what happens if I did this. I know it's not going to work, but I want to see why. You know, so that I could figure out how to deal with it later. Caitlin, how do I get rid of diatomes? I have my aquarium star for three months. What kind of diatomes, Caitlin? Brown? Blue-green algae? Uh, explain diatomes. Um, while you're at it, let me know what kind of lighting you have on your tank. How big of a tank it is. And, um, yeah, you started for three months. Okay, and also let me know how you're dosing it. What kind of substrate you're using? Uh, Fishman, I missed something. A couple of you guys, I think I'm caught up now. Right on. Keeping it real is the best thing for a good channel. That is true too. Alright, Damien, I think see, that's your answer to someone else's question. Hey, Hammy. Glad to see you in the live chat. Glad you can make it. I'm just working through the comments right now, so I might be a little late. So sorry about that. Yeah, uh, just to let you know, like Todd said, Todd Radson said, all my tanks go through diatome phase when new. Just wipe it off grass and they'll go away on its own. Uh, usually they will go away on its own. Once your tank is established and balanced out correctly, they will go away. A lot of people, you know, worry about diatomes. If you let it go out of control, you got to worry about it. But you shouldn't have to let it go out of control as long as you just go ahead and keep, you know, doing your thing and and let the tank establish itself and, and keep that balance going up, meaning, you know, do you have enough lighting, the right amount of lighting, the right amount of CO2 if you're running CO2 and the amount of fertilization, you know. And then uh, and just let it establish. And, so, and most of the time, it will go away. But... Just to tell you right now, all right, for those people that are having just starting a new tank and having diatome problems or algae problems, it's going to happen when you first set up your tank. First few months, three months, four months, it will happen. It will come, and it will also go away depending on what you do. Most of the time, just wait for it to establish, and um, and yeah, and just let it go, and it will usually go away. If you see it still coming back, then you have a imbalance somewhere okay a lot of times my suggestion is if it's a planted tank and it usually works is plant more plants get more plants so that you have more plants to out compete uh the nutrients for the algae i'll compete the resources that the algae needs and that will kind of call it call the algae or kind of slow down the algae itself so a lot of times just planting more plants getting more plants will help and, and that's the thing. A lot of people who start planting text, and I, I notice this a lot, is that uh, they put few stems in it and they call it a planted tank. I mean, that's fine. And you might want to grow it out. And actually, that's kind of fun to grow it out. But depending on your setup, that might take a while to do. So when you're setting up your tank the first time and you want to grow it out, you're just planting a few stems. But you have a tank or a lighting that 
uh, a decent lighting that either I suggest or someone suggested on that tank, then you're giving more lighting than it actually needs for those few stems of plants. And what you're going to have a problem with is giving all that lighting to algae. That's the best way I can explain it. Okay, so the algae is going to start to grow. So the way to offset that is either lower the intensity of your plants if you can, if the, the lighting has settings on it, or raise the lighting from your tank, or plant a lot more plants. Now, uh, what I do suggest is when people start a planting tank is just load your tank with plants. I mean, tons of plants. Um, if you know someone who would plant a tank, Ask them for their trimming. If you're friends with them, ask them for your trim trimmings. Okay, because someone like me who just has that one currently active one tank of uh, plants, and, I, and it's a it's high tech plant uh, tank right now, I'm growing plants like crazy. I mean, I have pearl weeds coming out of my butt. So that's kind of why I'm really um, glad that that uh, scape meeting's coming up because I'm going to donate a lot of that pearl weed to, to the club so that they could auction it off. Because I think a lot of people want pearl weed, right? And it's not only pearl weed, but my labelia is growing out of hand. I need to trim them, but I have no place to plant them. I'm going to send some to Alex, but I haven't been able to get his address lately. So I'm going to trim a lot of that and donate to my scape club so that they could auction off and get some money for the club. So, ask someone if you know someone that's already a plant tank. I'm pretty sure that they're going to have a lot of trimmings left. That if they're a good friend of yours, they'll just give it to you for free. And trimmings is probably the best way to start a planted tank. If you know someone that has a planted tank, um, that's how what happened like 10 years ago when I first got a planted tank. was my friend, my business partner back then, had a 120-gallon tank, a planted tank, and his stuff was going like crazy. And I said, I'm starting a planted tank. He goes, okay, cool. Take my trimmings. So I set up this tank and kind of... Uh, kind of set it up to the point where I was in time for his trimming, his weekly trimming. So he gave me his trimmings, and it was a bag of trimmings. I mean, literally a huge bag of trimmings. I mean, so I planted that 12-gallon tank and was a fully planted tank because of just from his trimmings. Okay, and that's how I started, and that's how I started figuring things out. Uh, so I didn't actually go buy anything until later on from from a store and when I decided... The plants I wanted to grow and and uh, the type of plants that I want to grow in that tank itself. So try that if you know someone with trimmings uh, or someone go in the groups, the buy sell groups or, or whatever. And some people are giving away trimmings for free. Find a local fish club, get in on the forums and stuff because there's a lot of people there that says hey, free for anyone who wants to come pick it up because that happens a lot on the escape forums that I'm at. Um, they have a buy and sell forum, but a lot of people there post and says, oh, I have a box full of trimmings free to anyone who wants to come pick it up in Monrovia or in uh, L.A. or in whatever. So that's free plants for you, right, to start out your, your planting tank or to maybe just try some plants that you don't want to buy uh, and that someone has given away for free, right? And that's, that's how you know. You're like, oh, I've never grown this plant before. He's giving it away for free. Go pick it up. Give it a try. Uh, didn't cost you anything. So if you kill him, well, you'll just be a plant murderer and you won't waste any money. Uh, think about getting some water wisteria to help nitrates. Anyone have this plant? Yes. Water wisteria is awesome and it will help with uh, nitrates. And they love, love nitrates. Uh, and they're easy to grow. So I have water wisteria in my 75-gallon tank in the, at the office. And that thing is just going crazy. Now, I figured out my problem with the office tank, which is not enough lighting. I only have that Phoenix Stingray on a 75-gallon tank. I know it's not enough lighting because I saw, I'm seeing how the water wisteria grow. I need to get a video of it later and talk about it. But the water wisteria is blooming on top. Nothing much is happening with the shorter water wisteria. And water wisteria, if you know water wisteria, can grow rapidly in good lighting, in decent lighting. It'll grow slow in low lighting or whatever. But that is when, when by looking at the water wisteria and how it's growing, I figured out why I'm getting brown algae in that tank. And that's basically because I don't have enough lighting. Brown algae will 
is a diatom that loves to grow in low light or high light, or intense low light or intense high light. I don't know if it's intense low light or too much low light or not enough light. There you go. Or intense lighting. Because all the other parameters are just fine. Okay. Um, and I stopped dosing that tank because of the brown algae. It's not a huge problem because it goes away after a water change. But it comes back in three weeks if I don't do water change. So, um, you know, that's that's what I figured out. It's the imbalance of the tank of the lighting. So I just, I'm going to put a flood light on it and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, anyways, off the top take on that one. I have no clue where I am on the chat. <clears throat> What's the best way, in your opinion, to hold plants in the substrate? Uh, just plant them, right? If you need to, uh, I, normally I plant them um, because I most of my tanks, pretty much all my tanks, I use substrate that's sand, right? Sandy substrate or sand, ADA, aqua soy sand, uh, fluval, black sand. I would use sand and that helps anchor the stems in the uh, substrate much, much easier. Okay, um, otherwise you just got to keep planting them and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll grow their roots in before they get dislodged. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has a trick to it, but if anyone else has a trick about anchoring your, your plants, pretty I guess he's asking about stem plants in your uh, substrate, uh, let them know. Uh, let's see, where am I? All right, White Gold, see you later. Thank you for joining me in the chat. Todd, take take it easy. Hope you do well. Any other uh, easy stem plants besides Wisteria or Anacris is good for excess nutrients? Uh, I believe Indian water fern is good for nutrients too. It kind of acts like water Wisteria in a way, uh, but it's fern. So it looks like Jaffer. I think that's one of the ones. Um, those two stem plants I know for sure is really good for nitrates. Uh, otherwise, if you don't mind the hassle, and I hate this because I have it in my office tank, I want I need to get rid of it. Duckweed just sucks the nutrients, uh, sucks the excess nitrates and everything out of the water. Um, uh, what is it? Guppy grass. Uh, and the other floating plants do well, but. For stem plants, uh, I don't know. I'll have to research that. Uh, but the best thing I always go with is water wisteria. That's just my, I think Kababa does it pretty well too. Hi, Susan. Missing me, but I've been here for but I'm here for a few. Yay! Welcome, Susan. I don't know if she left yet. Been talking too much. Hey, Patricia. Good to see you. Hey, Siakwa, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Looking forward to your collaboration with Jimmy. Oh, yeah, who's collaborating with Jimmy? It's cool. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I know, D. I do get really far behind on chat because I'm answering questions, and I don't want to miss everyone's questions. This is why I say it's going to be a big problem if the, ch the live chat gets any, you know, bigger. Well, it's not a complaint, but, you know, there's... There's ways around that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> a little algae is good, and a lot of BBA stuff. I hate that. Yeah, blackbeard algae is annoying. Uh, when I talk about little algae, I'm talking about the green algae that grows in your class. I'm not talking about BBA. I'm not talking about hair grass. That stuff is annoying. Uh, I try to get. I'll, I'd get rid of that stuff. But a uh, little algae on your grass, glass, not grass. Last is okay. Ever tried carpet plants? You know, every Alvin, that's Alvin Lowe. Have you ever tried uh, car, carpet plant seed? Uh, welcome, by the way, to the chat. I have not. People been asking me. Uh, one day I will try it, but I haven't tried it yet. So I, I couldn't tell you anything much about doing that or using uh, seeds. All right, Catalina. Catalin, brown algae. Okay. Just keep doing your water changes, okay? Um, 
It should start going away once your plant, uh, your uh, tanks start getting established. If you're three months in, getting brown algae now. Give it another month and see what happens. As long as it doesn't get worse uh, and it's starting to go away, then it's okay. It's just, it's your, just your tank is establishing. But if it does start getting worse, let me know. Uh, if you if you contact me, just tell them, tell me uh, this is Caitlin. Uh, I have the problem with the brown algae that I talked to you about in live chat. Uh, and then we'll try to figure out where the source is coming from, okay? So go to the Facebook group. Uh, join our Facebook group. Or, um, yeah, friend me on Facebook. Or if you don't use Facebook, 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 um, IM me on um, Instagram, okay? Uh, so, or just come back to another live chat and let me know. Just remind me that you're, you're Catalan. With the brown algae problem. Okay, and the uh, link to our Facebook group is right there. Come on, let's get these errors. There we go. Uh, is black sand the only stone chip to use on construction? Uh, I don't know, Manash. I don't know that question. Sorry. It's okay. It's all right if you're late. I'm here. We're still here. Uh, 24 watt JBL T5. Is that a high output T5? 40, 20, 54 liters. Of, ah! Damn it. Hold on. Let me pull up Google here. I hate when you guys do that to me. You guys got to remember, I'm in America. So when you uh, throw that metrics on me, I, I'm, I'm lost. What is it? 54? Four liters. Yeah, I got to. Uh, okay, so it's a fourteen gallon, fifteen gallon tank. All right. <coughs> <coughs> the JBL T five. Are you should be okay on lighting. So, it's probably just your tank establishing. But again, um, all your plants full of diatoms. Okay, clean out your plants like uh, the you know plants with the big leaves. You can easily wipe them off before you do a water change. So wipe them off. They'll just go in your water and disappear in your water. Just do that. Um, I don't know what you know what, it, and then do your water change. But if you could take a picture of it, join the Facebook group and then post it uh, so we can see what's going on. I don't know. You're saying you're full of diatoms, so I need to look, look and see how bad it is. How often are you doing your water changes? Uh, I would love to know that. What is your water chain uh, regimen? What fish would you recommend for a shrimp tank? Tetras are great for a shrimp tank. Usually any any fish would do great with the shrimp tank. Um, if if your tank is all about shrimp and that's going to be your main focus, get uh, nano fish, uh, small fish, uh, endlers. Um, what else? What are what are other nano fish are there, guys? Um, but you get nano fish, it'll look really good. It'll still keep the focus on your shrimp. Uh, but yeah, hopefully your shrimp don't eat your nano fish. My, uh, I think my uh, mono shrimps are becoming carnivores, or actually they're killing my my fish in one of my tank. I mean, all my fish are dead in that tank now. But my mono shrimp uh, seems to be like jumping after them. Maybe there's not enough algae in the tank. But I need to get those mono shrimps into my 20, 20 long. <clears throat> setting up a pond tomorrow good luck with that Jake it's going to be cool I'll put a liner in and uh, hook up the filter very cool that's going to be awesome if you're in the Facebook group uh, take some pics reading about the silent cycle yesterday where you cycle a tank with lots of stem plants ever heard of this method uh, no I'll look it up but I think it sounds familiar with lots of stem plants. I don't understand how the plants are cycling the tank. I mean plants itself will cycle the tank mainly because it's going to eat up the night. Traits, but that's nothing to do with cycling the tank. It has to do with eating up the nitrate. Um, when you're cycling your tank, you're building the bacteria in your filter biomedia to handle the ammonia. 
So I'm not entirely sure how this works with stem plants and, and considering a, a cycle, some kind of cycle. I'll look it up though, Martin. I'll, 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 maybe not understanding it or maybe you're not explaining it completely. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. So, uh, Peruvian Beat says, so blessed to have friends to mentor and you get started out right. It is true. If you can find some people to stick with and, and you know, that will be patient with you through the, the hobby, uh, then you pretty much go. So find someone that, that seems to know what they're talking about and then just hang with them. Buy them lunch. You know? Especially if he's a guy. Men just, you feed men and, and they're like grateful. Until they destroyed it, decided to destroy you, but that's men. Aquaballs, thanks for having us today. Good, you're a good friend to have. Well, thank you very much, Aquaballs. It's just so funny to say your name, Aquaballs. Aquaballs. Thank you, Susan. Susan did the conversion for me. Hi, Charlie. Welcome to the chat. Uh, Bajorn, welcome back. Uh, we're just talking. Just babbling on I did the main topic way early already so I'm just answering questions you're not sure about yourself you came across it yesterday okay I'll, I'll look it up uh, thanks for the link there Susan so uh, any other question guys uh, let me know I'll post it down below um, but non questions or non aquarium stuff uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp if you have not seen that awesome movie I love it Two end cred scenes. Make sure you stay after the movie to watch those. The first end cred scene was really, really good. Uh, the whole, the whole theater went ah when 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 that that, that end scene happened. So uh, yeah, it was really good. So if you uh, haven't yet watched Ant Man and the Wasp, really good movie, especially if you're in the Marvel series. Um, yeah. Uh, what other naw things to talk about? No, yeah, I don't. Know. Oh yeah, and again, just a reminder. Uh, escape meeting over at CK Fish World next Sunday uh, at I believe it's uh, 11.30 a.m. I'm not sure you guys got to check the time. So if you're in Southern California, <coughs> <coughs> definitely a good meet to go to. They throw up, throw together a pretty good party. My first shrimp tank killed... Uh, by tetras and dwarf garamis. <laughs> Wait, your shrimps killed your tetras and dwarf garamis, or your dwarf garamis and tetras killed your shrimps? See, here's the thing that I think for shrimp, if you don't feed them enough, will get rabid and just start eating anything in the tank. Because I have a feeling that those mono shrimps in my tank out. See, there's no plants in it right now because I pulled all the plants out. This was my old beachfront 10 gallon tank that I made a video about. I pull all the plants out, and all that was left is just a floating bunch of pearl weed, and um, and uh, let me see, and and just the shrimps, and it had like one glow tip tetra left. Now that one glow tip tetra is swimming around, and one time I saw a shrimp just like chasing after it. I didn't understand what was going on, so I just did nothing about it. And then yesterday when I came home, I'm like, oh, where did the fish go? Right, it's gone, and then I look in the corner, and this fish is dead. But all the shrimps were just ravaging it. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I already fed my shrimp. Uh, it's sad, but I think that shrimp just got ravaged. Uh, rabbit, uh, rabid. Um, so I don't know. Do you cor? I, I guess QT's quarantine. Do you quarantine uh, cherry shrimp? No, uh, not really. I, I don't really quarantine shrimp. When I get them, I just put them in the tank. I don't really quarantine many fish uh, because the tanks that I put together right now don't have really, really, really expensive fish in it. So I'm not too worried about about it. And usually where I get it from, the the store, uh, they uh, are really good uh, with the fish. And they, uh, they go through a quarantine process in a couple of stores I get them from. So usually I don't worry about it too much. Um, See, I case a store before I buy any fish or uh, livestock from. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're buying dry stock, eh? dry goods. It doesn't matter. But when you uh, when you do, I'm gonna decide to buy livestock from 
the store, you case it. I case it for a few days. I go there like one week, and the next week I'll go again, and then and then maybe the third week I'll decide to buy something if I could tell they're good or not. And I try to go different times, like uh, one time after work, uh, one time on the weekend, so I can see how they're taking care of the tanks, uh, how they're dealing with the fish, how they're selling, because I listen to them talk to other people in the tank. See, so I case them out. It's so weird. It's just, it is weird. Okay, I gotta admit it is weird. It's a little stalkery. Okay, but I do case it out because I want to know if that store is trustworthy. And I want to know if the advice they're giving out is sound. Okay, if if I go there, it's, and that's why I I never buy livestock from from Petco because go there, just hang out, just, you know, hang out for a little bit uh, on a busy weekend and listen. Right, when someone asks a question, listen to the employees. Sometimes you get lucky and they hire an employee that actually knows what they're talking about. Most of the time, they don't, and you will laugh, all right? Same thing with local fish. Just just because they are a local, uh, uh, local fish store doesn't always mean that they're good too, right? Sometimes local fish stores have been there forever that they just kind of gave up. They're just selling fish. This is a business now. Some local fish stores, most, at least the ones I go to, are really, really good. They care about you succeeding. They care about you succeeding because they want you to come back and buy more stuff. Uh, they want you to get hooked so you come back and buy more stuff. Uh, and in order to do that, you create that bond, right, between a local uh, hobby person that's going to get into it and know that since they're local, they're go you want them to keep coming back to your store. So you need to build that. And, and a lot of those really smart stores, local business stores, will do that. So... That's why I case them out. So I'll know when a store is just given up and I'm not going to ever go back to them again, right? Uh, versus a store that actually cares about the hobby, that cares about what they're doing, that cares that their customers is going to get the right advice, get the right um, uh, uh, right quality stock in order to keep going, right? Because, you know, you want that. You know, it's not all just about money sometimes. Uh and that just shows good business practices to me. And that's what I will say, ah, this is the store I want to just keep patronizing because these guys are good. Is it patronizing? Am I saying it wrong? I probably got it wrong. You got Vampire Shrimp. Prolific be my see you there at CK. Yeah, that'd be awesome, dude. I uh, would love to uh, hang out with you. But you got to tell me when you say when you meet me or whatever or when you're on if you're on Facebook and you talk to me you got to let me remind me of what your uh, YouTube username is cuz I go a lot by YouTube username cuz I see you guys here on live chat. I see you guys in the comment. So it's hard for me to connect everyone. And, and it's not annoying, but I find it funny that people talk to me on on Facebook and they talk to me like they know me. I'm like, "Who the hell are you?" I don't and, and I don't want to come out and say, "Who are you?" Because that's kind of rude, right? Um, but, you know, I just keep talking and kind of throw some hints at them, Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like when you left that message on YouTube, you know, I thought that was funny, hoping that he left a funny comment or whatever uh, until I could get the damn username out of him. Sometimes I just give him and say, you know what? You sound like you know me and you probably, I know you said you watched my video. Who are you again? You know, sometimes I just have to give up because... The subtle hints weren't being uh, uh, conveyed good enough. Too subtle. Chili raspberries work with shrimp also. Cool. Oh, I went to CKs every day when I was in the town. Cool. Yeah, that's true too, Select Pet. If you see a pet so get their fish shipment, you can learn a lot about their care. Oh, I know, damn, it's the end of two. I found another really cool fish store. Now, there's a lot of fish stores in the valley here. And there's a lot that I have not gone to. Um, mainly because of the distance. And in the valley is pretty huge. This is San Fernando Valley. If you watch old movies, where the surf, you know, this is where you go to surf. Hey, valley girl, this is where, you know, that's where all that came from. Okay, um, So the valley is pretty huge, and I'm on the... East end of the valley. The west end of the valley is huge too, so there's a lot of fish stores there. And I don't go there very often because it's a drive, right? Um, so it's like maybe 
30 minute drive to to this first store that I just found. So this weekend, I went to, you know, I was all friends over at that side of the valley. Uh, he had to take his kids to basketball practice. So, you know, I had time to waste because I was going to meet up with them and go and watch Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, but they're going to be late going to the house, so I said, no problem. I'll get off work. Usually I go to get off work and go to the house, but, you know, since they're going to be late, I'll be sitting in the car. And I'll be like, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to go check out a fish store while you guys go do your thing. So I went and checked out a fish store. The first one I picked was uh, Aquarium World, I believe it's called, in Canoga Park. Okay, and there, there's a couple, there's like three fish stores there I know of. I've never gone to. And uh, this one is Aquarium wor uh, World that I decided to hit that one first. There's the other two I was going to hit, but the, I never did because I got hooked at the first fish store I went to. Like, it was really cool. Aquarium uh, World, Canoga Park. I walked in, and it's a big store. And they have like, I don't know if they, they were doing maintenance that day. So he hired a lot of people. There's a lot of kids in there just doing watching all the, all their tanks. It's a huge store, and I, I'm going to try to contact them and do a uh, store tour with them. So it's a big store, tons of stock, right? So I'm walking around, went to the dry goods section, and the guy there, and I saw boxes of ADA Aqua Soil. I'm like, hey, how much are the Aqua Soil here? And he gave me the price. You know, he said the powder sand, seventy something bucks. The regular. The regular aqua soil is about 50 something bucks. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Are you guys stocking ADA now? Because the only store you can get them from is Nature's Aquarium, which is in Santa Monica, over the hill in the valley, which is about a 40 minute drive, an hour drive with traffic. Well, actually, an hour with traffic, 30 minutes drive, okay, uh, without traffic. So that's the only problem why I don't go to Nature's Aquarium. And it's a very small, crowded store, but I love that, 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 that shop. I just don't go there often because it's in Santa Monica. This one is closer to me. And he goes, yes, I'm going to start stocking ADA stuff because everyone keeps asking me about it. And I said, oh, this is awesome. Now I can tell people where to go in the valley to get ADA stuff. So we got into this whole conversation. He's a planet tank guy. He's, he's on their store. Uh, and, and he's just like, yeah, I'm starting not just ADA. I'm just only starting the ADA tanks, the equipment and everything, the supplements to the substrate and stuff. So... If you need ADA stuff and you're having a hard time and you're in Southern California, you're in the Valley, this is one of the stores to go to now. Okay, I'm going to do a, I'm going to try to contact them and do a fish tour, store tour, and uh, so you guys get an outlook, a layout of them. Uh, I love the place. I think there's going to be a new hangout for me if I can find it. Uh, maybe that could be a place where I could do a meet. Uh, because they have counters there and stuff. I don't know. Uh, again, it's a big store, but it's crowded with fish, obviously. They also have reptiles, too. So that, that's the other thing, too. If you're into exotic reptiles and stuff like that, they have a whole reptile section. So definitely worth to go check out, especially if you want ADA stuff. There's another store that stocks ADA here. So as far as I know, in Southern California, in the Valley area or in, in, in my immediate area, Santa Monica Nature's Aquarium stocks ADA and the store Aquarium World stocks ADA stuff now. There you go. That's my plug. Hey, Angelo. Welcome back, buddy. Welcome to the stream, Frankie. Skates. Yeah, <laughs> Priscilla. Hello, though. I'm here now. You can start now. Cute. We've been waiting an hour and a half for you, Priscilla. Took forever. Jeez. It's too funny. All right, final questions. Anyone else? Anything you want to know? It doesn't even have to be aquariums. You can ask me anything. It doesn't matter. That's so funny. I, I tell people, you can ask me anything. It doesn't have to be aquariums. And then people come up with the silliest questions. How's it today? It's it's hot, Angelo. It's very hot. I have my that's why it's noisy. Cause I have my air conditioning going. You got a question? Ask it. By the way, I saw. I saw you trying to push your uh, channel. You know, it looks good. Looking good. Keep pushing, buddy. Well, you, you say you got a question. You got a question, or you're asking if you got a question? Cause you question mark with the I got a question. So it's kind of like I got a question. 
How can I upload a video over 15 minutes? Um. Oh, did you? Are you? How many videos do you have uploaded now? Uh, I could try. Well, see, okay. Here's the problem with uh, my tanks are downstairs, and I don't normally like just display tanks out of uh, my tanks out of out of a uh, live in the live stream. Uh, I can, but the problem is, is I have to move it downstairs on my laptop, and my laptop isn't fast and very fast for live streaming. And I, I get a problem with live streaming down there; it doesn't come in very clear. Uh, so that's the problem. But I am reorganizing the office here, um, so I'm gonna set up a tanker here, so I can do that sometime later. Later. Oh, they have a vape shop over there. Yeah, I'll check out Ultramus. Very cool. Sounds good. Uh, Angelo, 180 something videos. All right, uh, Angelo, if you go to the Creator Studio. Go to your channel status and features, right? If you go in here, you uh, okay? There's something some here that says more than five minutes, and I can't see if I maybe it's this one right here. But if you go to this page here it'll say it will have something that says you can upload for more than five, longer videos you can now upload videos longer than 15 minutes all right you have to enable that okay so try to see if you can enable that if not it'll tell you why you can enable it or when you get if you have 180 videos you should be able to enable that you probably just haven't enabled it uh to do that so that's probably your problem so just go there remember it's uh go to go your creator studio it's on the channel status and features okay and then go to longer videos right here and then click the enable button everything in here is already enabled I'm ineligible for sponsorships because I don't have 10,000 100,000 is it yeah it's that new sponsorship button it's pretty cool it's kind of like a uh, a patreon button thing uh, so I don't know when uh, you're supposed to get it eligible clients hundred thousand subscribers so it's gonna be a while until they roll out to smaller channels they're testing it right now but that that's pretty cool but everything else you see here is all enabled so this is where you come in and, and, and if you have stuff that's not enabled you see other people uh, using it or uh, have that feature um, just make sure you go to that this page here and see if you can or have it enabled enabled okay so uh, hopefully that helps Charlie, on the big box stores, I find out when they get the fish in, so I'm there. When they're first introduced to tanks, I'll buy them before they spend too much time in the water. I have great results. Oh, that works. That's cool. I mean, I mean, if the access is the only place you have is big box stores, then that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. Very smart, Charlie. I like that. Good advice. I'm going to start using that to give it to everyone else, too. Yeah, if you're already doing 180 videos, if I remember correctly, you're more than enough to do 15 minutes. I think you get the 15 minutes like after the first 10 videos or something like that. I think you just never enabled that. I don't know. I don't know when you started your channel, but a long time ago, it it wasn't automatic. Okay, when you started channel like before that that feature got put in, you had to wait and you had to like apply to get. To be a partner or whatever to do 15 minutes or more. Uh, they f they changed that a while ago. But if you started your channel a long time ago and you're still there, you had to enable it. So if you started a channel a long time ago and, and, and you were there before it switched, uh, then you probably just didn't enable it. I was surprised. You, just, you couldn't upload 15 minute or longer videos. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. 
So, no more questions? All right, I guess that's the end of it. We went an hour and 40 minutes. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I am totally hungry, so I will go and get something to eat. Hope you guys have the rest of the weekend and have a really wonderful one. And I hope you guys have, uh, I hope you guys, I hope your tanks are doing well as well. Um, I will get back into making videos very, very soon. I think I am doing one today to release tomorrow and get, get going again on that. Uh, so thank you for joining me, guys. Um, I love you guys. Have fun out there and stay well with your tank. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.